There are common verses that we get to hear or we get to mention many a times. Yes, again, you don't get to understand exactly the weight behind them. And like they say, gratitude or thanksgiving, if you like, enhances our attitude. Have you ever sat down and asked yourself, what does this really mean for me, for my family, or even for us as a church, as a nation at large? So I want to pray and believe that even as you pay attention, as we read through the word of God this morning, these words will have a different meaning for the glory and honor of his holy name. Practicing gratitude doesn't always come easily. It's not something that you can always uh, say that naturally it flows without you putting some effort in it. But it goes a long way to bless the heart of our Lord and Savior, to bless our God who is our creator and source of everything. Now, while we may take it easy and relax like we are now and think through that which God has done before or is doing, or even like we've just sung a few minutes ago, that we are grateful for what he will do. What does it really mean to us? What does it mean to you as a parent, as a child, as a young adult, as a youth, as a teenager? What does this mean to us? An attitude of gratitude is something that you really need to sit down and think through. The fact is that each one of us today, as we are gathered in God's house, we are in different seasons of life. We are in different categories in every aspect or in either aspect, whether it's spiritually, financially, socially. Each one of us, there's a place where we are standing. And probably some of the things that some of us have gone through some of the successes we've experienced, you may not even think it's something that you can thank God for. And yet there's someone else who is praying, who is trusting God for the same thing. Praying and asking, if only God you do for me this, this, and that, I'll be grateful. But this morning we are here to ask ourselves, yes, that which God saw me through, did I even take a moment just to tell him, Lord, I am grateful. Thank you that you provided the school fees for my children. Thank you that you have taken care of them. Every single day they go to school and come back safely. Thank you that you have been faithful. The meals they eat in school, they were not contaminated. And if they were, they were never hurt. Thank you that you take care of every other activity, every other thing that happens. We wake up every day, you either go to school, you go to work, you attend to that uh, business, or the things you do on a daily basis. Have you ever sat down and just take a moment to appreciate God for that? Many a times, such a service like this today that we are having this morning, we would expect to have it towards the end of the year or towards a particular season. Probably you're in school, you're in college, and once you're done with the exams, that's when you feel like you have conquered. You have a reason to celebrate God. Today we want to learn that, that yes, it's important to do that, but we can go beyond that. We can look at every single detail every day and have a thankful, a grateful heart for what God is doing and we continue doing in our lives. Having an attitude of gratitude involves continuing to look for the good things in life, even when things seem not to be going our way. Yes, today, like you're seated in this service this morning, or probably you're watching us online, you may be there and there are plans that you have in place for the week or even for the day to day that once you're done with this service, you'll go out there, you'll do one, two, three things here and there. 
You're looking at this in coming week. And you're saying, yes, from Monday through Friday or Saturday, I'll be doing one, two, three, four, five things. But what assurance do we have that, yes, our plans, our projections will flow the direction we'd want them to go? What assurance do we have that that which you're looking forward, forward to will be as we desire or anticipate? The only way we can be assured is through our subject of discussion today, being thankful to God. Why? The moment we acknowledge that it is him who gives us the strength and the ability to do these things, we place our uh, ourselves in a position where he's bound even to do more for us. And as we do this, I want to believe we do with understanding that God is the one who, yes, gives us the strength and uh, he gives us the ability to do all the things that we do. You are placed in that office. You are placed in that school. Not because you're so good, you're better than anyone else, but because God ordained for you to be there. Praise the Lord. Do you have someone who agrees with me this morning? Yes, you being where you are, it is not by chance. God knew and God knows what he is doing in our lives. Yes, at times you may, fi you may uh, find that uh, the feelings our emotions carries us away. And we feel like, especially when things are not working as we had anticipated, we had projected, we feel like we don't want to even take a moment to even pray or even say that simple word, a two-word statement, a two-word sta uh, uh, sentence, thank you. To who? At times even to our own family members, the people around us, our parents, our children, our spouses. How about our God? We should go beyond that and have an attitude of grateful, being grateful for everything that has been brought our way or God is doing through us and in us. This practice can involve a great deal of conscious effort to look beyond any setbacks, feelings of fear, hopelessness, and disappointment. Especially in the beginning. Yes, when you look at life and all the things that one would desire to have in this life. And you sit back and think through. It's not a simple thing or it's not an easy task like maybe some of us would want to imagine. Having that sense of gratefulness goes a long way in dealing with situations circumstances that may want to dictate otherwise. When you are grateful, you can never have room for hopelessness. You can never have room for discouragement. You can have, never have thoughts of how things are not going to work. You can never think of otherwise or the negativity that might be there. Interestingly, like they say, news is no news if it's not bad news. Sindio, why are we so much focused on the negative? Why is the world today focused on how things are not going to work? And that is when we want now to make a kill out of it. In the recent past, we've heard of the wars everywhere. The fight between Ukraine and the other nation how the, the economies, the inflation is affecting us every day. But when the, 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 the shilling is gaining against the dollar, you don't get to hear that so much in the news. But when things are going the other way, everyone will be up and about talking about everything and Everywhere you get to hear of how things are bad. As Christians, you are called this morning 
to look at things differently and just focus on how we can be grateful to our God. The more you decide or purpose to embrace the feeling of gratitude, the sooner it will de develop into a daily habit. As a family, God has been gracious unto us. And one of the things as I was preparing for this message, I looked at our daughter, Precious. And the amazing thing is that she has grown to a point where she knows before we take any meal, before we leave the house for wherever we are going, we have to pray. I asked myself, does she really understand what this means? And to us, as the parents and the siblings, do we really understand what this means? And for you and I this morning, do we really understand what that means? Yes, at times we are accused of the only time we get to pray is before we eat our meals. I want to believe how hawako hapa. Bonaiswa sifiwe. Those Christians are not found in this assembly in the church this morning, House of Grace Rwaka, but you are people who acknowledges and knows who our God is and we do the right thing at all times. Now, when you deliberately make a decision to be grateful for everything, eventually, with no time, it will become a habit. It will become a daily routine. That in everything you do, no matter how small or how big it is, you will still find a reason to be grateful to God. Practically, today we are here. How, no, how many of us were thankful or grateful that Mungu amewafikisha kanisani? Because siyo lazima, right? Yesterday, we had gone somewhere with my family and uh, on our way back along Thika Road, we found uh, a saloon car. I don't know where it was going or coming from, but it required me over turn. And all the airbags were out. And my wife commented like Asema, Enyewe, going and coming back, it's a miracle. It's a blessing. Okay? I'm sure at one point or the other, we've made that statement before, that going and coming back, it's a blessing. But have you ever been grateful that God has taken you from point A to point B? Every day you wake up, like we said earlier, you go to church, you go to school, you go to your place of work, and you come back safe and sound. involved in any accident. Are you grateful? Do you take time to tell God, thank you for Johnny Masses. Thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for watching over me. I used the matatu, I drove, I used the boda boda, or even walking. Do you get to a point and tell God, I'm grateful for your care and protection. The Hebrew word for thanksgiving is toda. You like to do. And it means confession, praise, and offering. You can never say you're grateful or you keep it to yourself. Which is the same thing at times when we come to church and we are called upon to pray. Just to tell God, Thank you for the gift of life and what have you. Some of us remain quiet. If you are to do it in the biblical way, it's a call to confess. It's a call to praise. It's a call to lift your hands, lift your voice. It is an offering to our God by simply acknowledging that, yes, him who is our creator, the doer of the good things that we get to experience in our lives, he's the one who has done it for us. Praise the Lord. So it's important we get to not only say, yes, we are grateful, but your actions, your posture does not dictate, does not Show how grateful you are. Let's reflect on this. Many a times towards the end of the year, we get to receive gifts from our senior pastor, right? 
if you receive that gift, you keep it to yourself na unyamaze. Will she ever know how grateful you are? How many of us have ever taken time to go back and tell her, thank you, Pasi? To see you, Mikono. I don't want to embarrass anyone, <laughs> but it's a point of reflection. Okay? Our children, or the people that we live with, when you do something for them, no matter how small or how big it is, and they choose not to come back and say thank you, how do we feel? Of course, we feel bad. Thank you. I don't want to support our supporter somewhere. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you feel bad. But today we want to say that, yes, going forward, you will not be doing that. We will be very intentional to acknowledge the things that God is doing for us. Without gratitude, we become arrogant and self-centered. How is this? Sincerely speaking, if I come to you and do something for you and you don't say thank you, I'll feel offended. And probably the same to you. Sindio? Now, the only way we can ensure that we don't get to a point of uh, 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 of making uh, others or even giving others room for us, for, for us to feel offended is by exercising those simple statements. Thank you. God bless you. And it will go a long way to want to make that person, to want to make that child, to want to make that parent even to do more for you. Now, the Bible tells us or reminds us that if you go to our earthly fathers asking for bread, asking for fish, and what else? There are three things. Sindio, they can never give us on the contrary. If you ask for bread, can they give you stone? If you ask for, uh, for fish, can they give you snake? How much more can our Heavenly Father do? How much more can he go out of the way to bless us with? Probably, does he feel like we are never grateful? Does our God look at you, look at me, look at us, and feel like, you guys in Kama Tumezoyana, I get to do this for you, I get to do that for you, but you are never grateful. And being grateful, it begins by just showing that, by saying it, by expressing it before him, that when we come here during our normal family service, during our Sunday school, during our interactions in the teenager's class, that we can take time and just lift our voice and our hands and tell him, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for the gift of life, the gift of sound health and mind, the gift of food, shelter, and even clothing. How many of us today didn't have something to eat or to drink in the morning? How many have gone without a meal for days? You might be here in our midst, probably asking, what, where will I get the next meal? Where will I get rent for my family? School are closed now. Watoto wako nyumbani. You used to do one piece, one loaf of bread. Now we are buying how many? To Sijibu, wewe. <laughs> but God is still faithful to provide. Right? Someone was saying, amechoka, amepinga kilene mbaka, amechoka sana, uliza, hii mwezi moja itaisha lini, they go back to school. And they are still our children. And we, are, we ought to be grateful for them. Praise the Lord. Parents, praise the Lord. Do we love our children? Amen. Children, we love you. God bless you. And we thank God for you. I hope, how many of us, by the way, are there on Friday for the singles seminar? Hallelujah. Let's, let's appreciate them. Let's clap our hands for them. What I've just said may not make sense to you, but you're getting there. So we are grateful for you. And we don't want to, to get to a point where God will be annoyed with us. God may want to term us arrogant simply because we are not grateful. The situation, the circumstances around us uh, 
have taken us and you want to feel like, ah, this is too much for us. That is not us this day. Praise the Lord. We can have thankful hearts towards God even when we don't feel like. Yes? Some of us are shaking their hands. Why are you shaking your head? Probably there's something very fast in the click in your mind. That at that particular moment you are looking at that particular thing, that project, and you're wondering, how will I go through this? How will I manage this? How will I overcome this? How will I raise the resources or the funds required for this? But interestingly, even during that moment, there's something that you can be grateful to God for. I may not get to know exactly what each and every one of us have gone through previously or probably are going through now. And still as it may be a negative thing, it can also be a success. And you are so much in it that even sitting back and having a reason to acknowledge that, yes, wait a minute, this is the Lord's doing, was not in the equation, was not anywhere near you. And that's why we are grateful and we thank our senior pastor for having that thought that even during, I'm in the middle of the year, we can have this service. We can have a moment that we can reflect on the faithfulness of God. And therefore, we are here to encourage us and to remind us that it is important for us to be grateful to God. Praise the Lord. Yes, we can be angry. We can feel like as much as we'd want to be grateful, there's no reason. There's no uh, uh, anything. There's nothing that can make you uh, have that attitude of gratitude. At times, it's the things that we go through or even sin. That in one or the other, you have messed up. You have gone out of the way. But interestingly, we are here to encourage you that, yes, even when that happens, our God is merciful. Our God is loving. Our God is caring to still open wide his arms to embrace us and to help us rise up again. One of the reasons why God was very grateful and happy with his friend, to a point of where calling him his friend, David, is whenever he went down, whenever sin overcame him, he knew that he would still go back to God and his masses, which are new every morning, were there for him. So he repented and God out of it would still give him a chance to become his friend and to move on with life. This is what the Bible calls a sacrifice of praise. We've read Psalms 100 and it commanded that we should enter his courts with and we should enter his gates with thanksgiving, sorry, and his courts with praise. You give thanks to him and praise his name. So by you telling him, Lord, I'm grateful. Yes, we have to be deliberate. That when you say that, those words as they come out, your mind can connect, can reflect on what God has done in our lives. That from where you sit, from where you live, you have a shelter on top of your head. You can place food on your table. When you enter in his gates, when you come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving, are you grateful to God for that which he has done for you? As you speak, the rains are going on. None of us I want to believe I'm living in a roof that is leaking. Are you grateful to God for that? Maybe, thank God, the screen is working. Very fast, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. If you read from the King, New King James Version, it says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. By Christ Jesus, 
we were saved not by our own goods, our own good deeds, not by our own strength or might, but by his grace. And the same Jesus who went out of his way to die, to be crucified on the cross, it was not a simple task for him. Actually, he got to a point and he prayed to God that only if the cup would be removed from him, he would be grateful. If he could go to that extent of bearing that weight for you and I to be saved, how much more should you and me be grateful to God? That from the beginning, that which was lost, the relationship between man and God, after many years, God still had a plan that you and I can never perish but have the everlasting life. If we can be grateful for anything, that should be the first thing that we should be grateful for. And that is why the scripture I've just read, we are reminded that therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Among other things that we get to go through on a daily basis, the first and foremost, we should be grateful for the sacrifice that Christ uh, gave or did on our behalf, dying on the cross so that you may be redeemed. The faith we have, the Bible records, that is not a futile faith. It is not a hopeless hope, if there is such a statement, but it's a living hope that Christ came, died, so that we can have a new whole being and we can have the eternal life at the end of it all. So probably if you came in today and you're wondering, what should I be grateful to God for? Do you have a reason now to thank God? That he gave his only son. Whosoever believes in him shall not do what? But have the everlasting life. Thank God that yes, we accepted the sacrifice. We accepted the offer. And I want to believe we did this from the point of understanding. That yes, as long as you're born of a woman, you are born with a sinful nature. And out of the sacrifice that God gave his only begotten son, that he died on the cross, as a result of that, we are redeemed. So by you believing in that, you are no longer the old self. You are not among them that are cast out. You are a part of the family. You are entitled to the blessing that God has given us by believing in him, by being a part of the family. That is why John 1.12 says what? That you who believed in him, you are given a right to be called the child of God. If you was to end this sermon at this point, do you have a reason to celebrate and to thank God for? Yes, that he gave his son that you and I are no longer bound in the sinful nature. You and I are no longer living in the old self, but we are a whole new creation. We are children. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Praise the Lord. Now, um, that is the fruit of our lips, the same scripture, giving thanks to his name, giving thanks to our God. Again, if you need the same scripture from the Amplified Version, it says, Through him, therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, to thank, the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. I'll go back to the point that I started with, where we are saying that when we say we are grateful and you choose not to speak it out, you choose to keep it in your heart. Are you really grateful? No. We may not tell, okay, our God is amazing and our God is gracious. He will still understand us the way we are. But it will go a long way if you can confess it. You can speak it out. You can dance. Actually, one of the reasons why <laughs> I want to believe Pasi gave me this opportunity is because I kept on asking her, when will we have the Thanksgiving service. Now, where was this coming from? I had an opportunity to live in Kisumu for around four years. That is between 2009 and 2013. 
And by then, I used to fellowship in a church under a Nigerian pastor. Now, when it comes to Thanksgiving, I believe we can all attest that, yes, our brothers and sisters, Nigerians, they know how to do it. Nukweli, when you see them dance, when you see them celebrate, when you see them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, it simply means that, that they can dance any manner and kind of dance just to celebrate God. Maybe with your permission, Pastor, we'll ask uh, Minister Emmy to do a song of thanksgiving after this sermon. We see each one of us dance. Lakini utisweka kwa majaribu na Pastor Colnerius. We try to do that. Ilikata. Tunajaribu na utapata wengine wa meenda. Yeah. But Arthur is here. So I know he's good at that. We'll, we'll, we'll do it after the service. Now. It doesn't do any harm for you and I to dance to bend, to kneel, to jump, and to do everything in expression of our gratefulness to God. Praise the Lord. Because if he can give you, if he can bless you with the gift of life, that today as we speak, as we stand here, you're not in the hospital bed. You're not limping. You're not in pain. That you can stretch. You can speak. You can smile. Brothers and sisters, isn't that a reason enough to celebrate God? The weather has changed. I don't know whether it's an outbreak, but kuna homoflani yapo haishi. We thank God for Brother Arthur. God has healed him, praise the Lord. And probably we've experienced this. I have some colleagues in the office. For the last two weeks, they've not been able to come back. They've tried to they were put on medication. Still, they're not working. But here you are. You are alive, sound, healthy. That's a reason to celebrate. That's a reason to be grateful to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, actually, to go to a point, I was asking myself, how should I go about this? Why? This topic is so wide and there's so much that we can cover. But allow me to narrow down. Two, why should you and I give thanks to God? Why should you and I give thanks to God? One, it honors God. If you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, Paul addressing the Corinthians, he puts the emphasis of why we need to glorify God despite the issues or the challenges of life, the successes of life, the many things that you might be handling at any particular moment. For all things are for your sake, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. There's so much that he addressed. There's so much that was going on. But in all this, Paul chose to narrow down and to advise the church at Corinth why they should be grateful to God. I'll pose the same challenge to us this day without necessarily going into anything or the many things that you and I or many of us might be facing. But just look, think through and ask yourself, in the midst of all this, what can I still be grateful to God for? Is it school fees that you're asking yourself, yes, they're here, they're at home. In the next three weeks, they'll be back at school. Where is it coming from? Probably it's a project that you initiated. You started some time back and you're wondering, now here I am. We are here as a church. There's so much that we need to do. What next? In the midst of all that, we still have a reason to thank God. Praise the Lord. They came in and did what they did in the church. That's why you can see you don't have some of the screens. But you still have a reason to thank God. Our service is still going on. 
we still reach out to that brother, that sister that is seated somewhere and wondering what should I do next. You have a reason to celebrate. You have a reason to thank God for. It will not stop us from moving on, from remaining focused. When this was brought to our senior pastor's attention, thank God for Apostle. Let's put our hands together for Apostle Jimmy. That's the reason again to thank God for. Okay? So, why should we give thanks to God? It is a command. The same scripture we've read, Psalms 100, verse 4. That's why I requested us to repeat. It does, it does not ask us when we come or when we do what or that, but it is very straightforward. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with... So it's a requirement. When you come into God's house, usikuja tu even there for the sake of coming. Yes, you are there as the praise and worship leader. You are there as the technical person. You are there. You are the leader of the service. Do you just come for the sake of coming because you are the one who will do one, two, three, four, five activities in the church? Or you are there as the protocol, part of the protocol team? Do you just appear for the sake of appearing? We are required. We are expected that when we come, we come to offer our sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. So it's a command. So sour. I don't know whether you had looked at it that way, but yes, to me, I never thought in that line, but today now I know that when I come, among other things, as I lift my voice, as I lift my hands, as I do the things I do, it is a command for me to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise to our God. The other reason why we should be grateful or thankful to God, it is an evidence of our spiritual condition or our value system. The moment you intentionally or you purpose to be grateful to God, it simply tells us what you value. What is your belief system? Do you acknowledge that yes, up to where you are and the far that you are going, it is God who gives you that platform. It is God who empowers you. It is God who propels you, who makes things work together for your good. It is God who, even when we do not know the way, when you do not know where our resources will come from, how we will go about it, he still guide you, he still lead you and show you this is the way. That voice that will tell you, walk in this path, follow this direction, walk with this person. He'll bring the customers on your way. Do you acknowledge that? Be as human beings, yes, we see or we get to hear what you do. And we are here as um, witnesses of how you go about your life and the things you do. But to him who sees even where we cannot see, is very much pleased when he knows that you acknowledge him as your helper, as your guider, as your provider, and as everything that you have in life. So, it is an evidence of your spiritual condition and your value system. It's also a form of worshipping God. There are so many references in the Bible for the children of Israel when they were brought out of slavery and when they demanded to have their own king and all that, Moses was given the commands. And there are many instances where the children of Israel were called to appreciate God, to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Today, we are also called to 
worship our Father. Worship our God. By simply telling him, Lord, I am grateful. And that is why we were given opportunity that not only are we going to gather this day like we are gathered this morning and tell him, Lord, you are grateful, but also we are going to go an extra mile and give a sacrifice of the fruit of the work of our hands. Do you remember that? You are remind we were uh, requested that as we come in for this Thanksgiving service, we come with a an offering to worship our God. The offering is geared towards building the sanctuary. So, as we learn why or the essence of us being grateful to God, remember, it is a form of worship. It's a way of expressing our gratitude to our God. Did you know that also being thankful or grateful to God, it is a product of faith. When you step out of your way and thank God in advance for that job that you have been praying for, for that contract that you are trusting God for, it is a way of you expressing your, great, your gratitude to God. Someone was sharing with me and they told me that he's a contractor. Every time they're going for the bidding process, once they do the quotations, they always take time to pray for those quotations before they're submitted. What is that? Faith in action. Praise the Lord. And part of you being grateful to God, part of you showing that, yes, you acknowledge God, he's the one who makes ways for you, grants you that favor, that when you submit that quotation, amongst many others that are submitting the same quotation for the same job, that only yours will be singled out and you're given that opportunity. So this topic or this Thanksgiving thing, my friends, my brothers and sisters, is so wide that when you get to like look at it keenly, maybe it may require some Sundays to get to understand it fully. But for today, just understand that why we should give thanks to God. It is a product. We get to show how our faith, our standing with God is. A person is thankful to the degree that he trusts in the Lord and has love for God and man. By you simply telling him, Lord, in advance, I'm grateful for this opportunity, for this door that you're opening for me. It's your way of also acknowledging his power and his doing in your life. When you are grateful for his grace and his love for your, for your life and the things around you, we do this in anticipation of what he can do. It's interesting when you look at the story of the children of Israel when they were told to move from the land that they knew, the things they were used to, the meals they were used to, and everything else. Going to a land flowing with milk and honey, if I was part of them, I would only imagine milk and honey flowing. How? Probably by then it was the thing of the day. But again, imagining a land flowing with that with the milk and honey. I mean, it's, it's next to impossible. But in anticipation, in knowing that, yes, he who promises is faithful to bring these promises to a reality, is very faithful to do the same. They went ahead. They went, they, they moved from the, 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 the land of slavery to the promised land. And probably the same case or the same situation that you are this morning and you're wondering, when God is saying that, yes, things will still work out, things will be better for you, you're asking yourself, how? When you believe in God, when you are grateful to him, he will surely make it for you. He will make it happen for you without you necessarily knowing how because he is a faithful God. Praise the Lord. Now, the other thing that you should know is that your failure or non-compliance to give him thanks comes also with some challenges. In actual fact, there are dangers or consequences of you not being grateful to God. I'm sure you've read of the story of the, the ten lepers. The ten? Are they lepers? The ones that were healed. And only one of them did what? Not only was he healed, but he was made 
whole. So, what happened with the rest of um, the other nine? Maybe the same issue, the same challenges they were facing, they went back to the same situation. But for him who was grateful, was made whole. If you were to put that into today's context, is you might be there and you're only trusting God for an opening in a particular line. Okay? He goes ahead, he opens that door for you, he gives you that connection, and once it is done, you never, Amma, you've never gone back to tell him, Lord, I'm grateful. That is why you find, yes, umepata job. Amma umepata your contract. Again, una struggle na finances. Una struggle na workers. Una struggle na suppliers. Maybe. It might be the reason. So what do we need to do? With the understanding that, yes, God is the one who made a way for you. God is the one who made a way for us. We need to go back to him and tell him, Lord, we are grateful. Because where he leads, he will provide. He will sustain. He will order, direct everything that you desire. Praise the Lord. So let's not be a people who are going to endure the consequences of being ungrateful. Rather, we'll remain grateful and we'll make it our daily routine to give thanks to God continually. The other thing is that as we do that, as there are consequences or challenges of being ungrateful to God, it is also a way of dishonoring God, which leads to dependency on our own strength. The moment you choose not to be grateful to God, you are simply telling him, Enyewe sa God, he ni efforts zangu. He, it's like I did it by myself. It's my network. It's the resources that I have that has brought me where I am. You may not like put it that way in words, but by implication or by you not being grateful, going back to him and tell him, Lord, I'm grateful. That is what it simply means to God. That you don't acknowledge him anywhere. He's not in the picture. You are the only one who know, knew or knows how you went through what you went through and how you got where you are. May God help us that none of us will be found in that situation. Praise the Lord. And the challenging, I'm at the bigger picture is the moment we choose not to focus on God and acknowledging him for what he's doing or he has done in our lives, we end up or we, cannot be, we can never be in control of our emotions. We can never be in control of uh, uh, murmuring, complaining, and all that. Because as human beings, we are limited. Our knowledge, which are told is like filthiness before God, our wisdom can only take us to a certain limit. But when we rely on God, he is able to even help us overcome those challenges where we get to a point and we feel like this is the dead end. He's able to take us or move us to the next level. I like one statement that was uh, shared or spoken to us those days in Ikiwa Kisumu where you were told, the moment you dance, the moment you celebrate, that level that you are, you are simply saying, God, I'm ready for the next one. How many of us are ready for the next level? This is the only season. This is the only time. These are the ways that you can dance to your next level. Praise the Lord. May it be spiritually, financially, socially. You can only go to the next level. The moment you've shown, you have proved to our God, who is our source of everything, that, yes, Lord, I'm grateful. You acknowledge that getting to where you are, see your efforts, Zako. Even you being in school as a student, you may think that Abana, he is someone who makes sense to me. It is making sense to you. See your obvious for you to be in school from day one to the last day. In actual fact, if I'm to tell you this, I dropped out of school in Form 1 because of lack of school fees. I really desired Nisome to the highest level that I could. But he dropped out. It hurted me so much that I had to go back after five years and register as a private candidate. So, you being in school, please, don't take it for granted. Praise the Lord. You being in college, 
And the school fees is there. It's provided. Kuna challenges that is not paid in full from the word go. But in a way too, mysteriously too, God and provide and you maneuver your way until you're done. It is a miracle. It is a blessing. Praise the Lord. So please, again, let's not be among them who are ungrateful to God. And we end up facing the consequences of being ungrateful to God. Praise the Lord. We should always acknowledge the grace of God in our lives. And uh, it is, the, when we do that, this is in response to God's grace and love. According to Psalms 75 verse 1 and Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4. If you could project that very fast. Part of the reasons why we give thanks to God is in response to God's grace and love. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, all you people. There's a scripture, I think, in Psalms as well that talks about us being grateful to God. All you nations, give thanks unto our God. Acknowledge his mighty acts, his mighty deeds amongst you. We looked at how God gave his son, and we know very well what God did for the children of Israel in the wilderness and all that. So when the psalmist writes this, he knows, he understands exactly what it means to be grateful to God. The same thing should apply to us, even as we trust God to do great and mighty things in our lives. Just having an attitude of gratefulness is not enough. We must say thank you. You are here as a couple, as a family. Does your spouse Say thank you when you serve them food. Does your husband say thank you? Does your wife say thank you? Do your children say thank you? Do you say thank you to your children? Before now, we come and tell God thank you. In actual fact, thanksgiving is more of a relationship that we can build on. Praise the Lord. We must say thank you to each other and also to God for the kind and the beautiful things he has done for us. Why? When we thank God for the good things in our lives, we honor his provision, his protection, his steadfast love. Saying thank you is our way of praising him, worshiping him, and honoring him for what he has done. And like we said, when you appreciate God for where you are, it's a way of you telling him, Lord, I'm ready for the next season. I'm ready for the next level of my life. Praise the Lord. You've been there. The word of God spoke to us in the beginning of the year. That is our year of divine alignment. How far have we gone with that? How is God aligning you? How have you been grateful that, yes, this far, I'm an Russia and i hapa, so I'm trusting him for the next level. Jimmy, check out this hour. God has been faithful. All is only that maybe you and I have not been keen enough to realize that and to align. He's aligning our ways. He's aligning our finances. He's aligning our projects. He's aligning our families. Are you grateful? for the Father that God has brought you? Are you grateful for the provisions that he has made available to us? It will only be appropriate for us to do this and that is why we have this service this morning and I would encourage us to not only stop at this as we come to an end of this session, but let's look at the bigger picture. Let us focus on what is ahead of us. Let us take time and be very intentional to be grateful to God at all times. God sets up systems in place for us to enjoy. But if you're not grateful for what he's doing, you may not see the bigger picture of what he has for each and every one of us. So my prayer for us as individuals, as families, as a church, is that we are going to cultivate that attitude of gratitude. And as a result, God will do more and more in our lives. Let's not be the people. 
Let's not be the hindrances. Let's not be the ones who are going to suffer the consequences of being ungrateful. He has provided for you financially all through the years, even this far. But you're never grateful to him. Kindly, let's purpose to be grateful to God. He has protected you. He has ensured that, yes, every single day you go out there, you do the things you do on a daily basis. You are never grateful. From today going forward, let's be grateful for this love, for his grace, for his mercies unto us. And you will be in a position to enjoy even much more from what he has to offer to us. Praise the Lord. So God has called us to worship him, to praise him, to be grateful to him. How are we going to take up this challenge going forward and remain a grateful people? And even as I conclude, you might be there. You've never considered your relationship with God. You've never taken a time and asked yourself, how am I? How is my relationship with my Father, with my God? And you have never taken that sacrifice, that offer that he has given you, that when you hear his word, when you hear what he has for you, and he has freely given you the gift of salvation, his son died on the cross so that you can be redeemed. What are you waiting for? Why are you denying him the opportunity to bless and to change your life? So, Ujaokoka, all this you are saying here may not make sense. Why? Because you don't have a relationship with him. Why can't you take up the offer this morning? Why can't you take that bold, that courageous move and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. I'm here. I want to accept you as my God. I want to be grateful for the gift of your son. He would have done anything else, but he thought it wise to give his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be re redeemed, so that you can have that relationship that was lost from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. So you are there. You're not born again. We give you this opportunity. You may not necessarily come here. You can lift your hand. Our pastor will pray with you after this or any of the ministers. Do you have someone who wants to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior? Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Appreciate our Father. Thank you so much. May God bless us. I hope to mebarikiwa. To mebarikiwa. Asante ni sana. So, Pasi, karibu sana. Uh, to appreciate Pastor Cornelius as he comes over. Let's put our hands together just to appreciate our brother, Minister Mike, for speaking unto us and for releasing the word of the Lord to us this afternoon, come this morning. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. And I hope it's a challenge to all of us that we will walk a life of thanksgiving. As a family, you as a husband, as a wife, as a child, always have that culture, that lifestyle of thanksgiving. And also when you come before the Lord, always have that attitude, that culture of thanksgiving.